Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. Today once again we delve into the cartel world, and in particular, covering a case that many of you have asked me to touch upon, that being the brutal execution of Manuel Mendez Leyva. The execution took place in 2010, and the video is seen as one of the OG narco execution tapes. For its day, it was extremely brutal, and it soon made the rounds on various shock sites such as Bestgore, and was even heavily shared on social media sites such as Facebook. Even to this day, Facebook do a pretty bad job of managing and deleting disturbing content. We saw that quite recently with the Ronnie McNutt case. But back in the day, in the early 2010s, Facebook were notorious for their lack of action in regards to such content. So the video at the time made the rounds. In relation to the video, it was a product of the war at the time between the Beltran Labour Organisation and the Sinaloa Cartel. The war resulted in much bloodshed. The Beltran Labour Organisation was headed by the five Beltran Labour brothers, Arturo, Carlos, Alfredo, Mario Alberto and Hector. Originally, the organisation was founded as a branch of the Sinaloa Cartel. Interestingly, they had close ties with Joaquin Guzman, aka El Chapo. In fact, it said that the brothers were distant relatives of El Chapo, and they were highly respected within the Sinaloa cartel. In fact, during the early to mid-2000s, the Beltran Leyva clan were extremely important to Sinaloa, for example, after the arrest of Gulf cartel leader Osiel Cardenas, the Sinaloa cartel sensed a power void and they began moving into Gulf cartel territory. This resulted in several battles and shootouts of which the Beltran Labour organisation participated in, and also in the mid-2000s, the Beltran Labour organisation were crucial in relation to securing drug routes in northeastern Mexico. It said that during this time period, Arturo Beltran Leyva led powerful groups of assassins and sicarios to fight for these trade routes on behalf of Sinaloa. So in the early years, the relationship between the brothers and El Chapo was extremely fruitful. However, things soon turned sour. On the 20th of January 2008, Alfredo Beltran Leyva was arrested. This was seen at the time as a huge blow for the Sinaloa cartel, as he allegedly oversaw large-scale drug smuggling operations and also was a key money launderer for the cartel. However, the remaining Beltran Labour brothers grew suspicious of El Chapo and essentially blamed El Chapo for the arrest of Alfredo. At this point, tensions grew and a split, followed by a war, was inevitable. In fact, the conflict directly led to the death of one of El Chapo's sons, Edgar. Rumour has it, Edgar was his father's chosen successor, but he was kept out of the family business until he completed school. By 2008, Edgar decided to do business for the cartel. In 2008, Edgar and a couple of his associates were gunned down while driving a red SUV in the city of Culiacan. Multiple Sicarios opened AK-47 fire on the SUV and riddled the vehicle with bullets. Edgar and his two associates were killed. Interestingly, there are differing reports in regards to what happened that day. Mainstream reports indicate that the Beltran Labour brothers put out a hit on Edgar and that they were responsible for his death. However, other rumours suggest that this was a case of mistaken identity and, in fact, perpetrated by the Sinaloa cartel themselves. Rumour has it that the red SUV was mistaken for Arturo Beltran Leyva's car, who at this point was an enemy of Sinaloa. So was this a case of friendly fire and mistaken identity? Or were the Beltran Leyva brothers responsible as mainstream media paints out? Who knows? But as mentioned, the man in the video, Manuel Mendez Leyva, allegedly worked for the Beltran Leyva organisation, and in particular, it said that he worked under a man by the name of Edgar Valdez Villarreal, who was also known as La Barbie. Now the story of La Barbie is an interesting tale that quite frankly is worth a video in itself, but in short, La Barbie was actually a Mexican-American he was born in Laredo, Texas, 
and growing up he was a popular high school football player. His nickname came from his American football coach at the United High School, essentially because of his white skin, blue eyes and facial features. He was actually compared to a Kendall because he had little hair. Despite being pretty good in school and being a popular student, Lababi in his late teen years started to get in trouble with the law. For example, his first arrest came at the age of 19 in Texas, where he was charged with criminally negligent homicide for running over a middle school counsellor with his truck while speeding down a high street. He actually wasn't indicted for this crime, and also, while he was still at school, he became a marijuana dealer on the streets of Laredo. Apparently, Edgar's father tried his best to keep his son away from crime, even offering financing a college education in order to focus on business. However, Lababi was soon indicted on charges of distributing marijuana. To avoid capture, he fled to Mexico, and at this point, he allegedly joined the Beltran Labour organisation, and he quickly moved through the ranks due to his connections in the US, and due to the fact that he was bilingual, he could speak both Spanish and English. Lababi quickly impressed the hires up of the Beltran Labour organisation, so much so that he actually ran the armed wing of the Beltran Labour organisation by the name of Los Negros. When he took charge of this group, Los Negros was originally part of the Sinaloa cartel, but once the Beltran Labour organisation split, the Los Negros followed, as did Lababi. So Lababi chose the side of Beltran Labour. However, as the years progressed and Beltran Labour were losing their war to Sinaloa, this is when tensions in the Beltran Labour organisation started to rise. Alfredo Beltran Labour had been arrested and Arturo had been killed by the police. At this point, Lababi wanted control of the organisation. That resulted in an internal war between Lababi and Hector Beltran Labour. This led to much bloodshed, and allegedly, over 150 people were killed due to this conflict. As the years passed, the Beltran Labour organisation, due to internal struggles and high up members being arrested or killed, essentially diminished into nothing. It said that by the mid 2010s, the cartel completely disbanded. On the 30th of August 2010, Edgar Valdez Villarreal known as La Barbie, was captured by Mexican Federal Police near Mexico City. On the 30th of September 2015, La Barbie was then extradited to the USA. Eventually, in June 2018, he was sentenced to 49 years in a US federal prison. That is just a brief synopsis on La Barbie. Honestly, there's so much more information available out there on him, but but he was a savage and ruthless individual. He's definitely one of the most interesting uh, figures within the cartel world, no doubt about it. But nevertheless, enough backstory. What happens in the actual video? The video opens up, and you see Manuel Mendez Leyva sitting in a chair with his hands tied up. His eyes have also been blindfolded with duct tape. He's surrounded by four Sicarios, all dressed in black, belonging to the Sinaloa cartel. They are all heavily armed, carrying assault rifles. The first minute or so of the video is your standard cartel interrogation. They ask for his name and who he works for, and Manuel confirms that he works for La Barbie under the Beltran Labour organisation. At the end of the interrogation, they tell Manuel that his time is up. They tell him, already? From here you go. At this point, Manuel raises his bound hands to try to protect his throat. Manuel is pleading, and one of the Sicarios tries to lower his hands. Manuel does not cooperate, so one of the other Sicarios punches him extremely hard in the ribs. Manuel yelps in pain, but lowers his hands. The Sicario standing behind Manuel pulls his head back, grabs a knife, and slashes into Manuel's throat. This isn't a quick beheading, and they decide to let Manuel suffer. After a couple of slashes, they let Manuel bleed out for a while, all while the Sicario is still pulling his head back, exposing the deep gash in Manuel's throat. Blood pours down his chest, 
and the gurgling sounds are haunting. You can see the blood bubbles as he's trying to breathe. If I were to describe the sound, it almost sounds like somebody sucking on a straw from an almost empty cup. That's the best way I can describe it, but you can audibly hear the blood bubbling and him struggling and wheezing for breath. After letting him bleed for a while, they continue with the beheading. They continuously slash his throat, and throughout much of this, he is still alive. Eventually, they cut so deep, they reach the spinal cord. At this point, they stop sawing with a knife, and instead, start hacking against the spinal cord, which makes a really kind of thudding noise, like a thudding clank noise is the best way I can describe it. Blade on Bone has a unique but horrible sound. It's at this point in the video where Manuel finally passes away. As they're hacking into his spinal cord, his body goes limp and slumps down into the chair. They eventually sever his spinal cord and then complete the beheading. Much like most beheading videos, they then hold the bloody and severed head up to the camera and eventually lay it down next to his body. And that is where the video ends. Several of you guys have asked me to cover this case, and many said it's one of the worst beheading videos out there. It's certainly not a pleasant watch, I can assure you that. The thing that struck me about this video not only were the sounds, but how deliberate this act was. They knew exactly what they were doing, and how to prolong Manuel's suffering, which is the main thing that stuck with me in regards to this video. It's not surprising though, because the war between Sinaloa and the Beltran Labour organisation was very personal, so it's not surprising to see this was the type of violence that was going on back then. But you know, what can I say? A horrible video, and it's not worth checking out. The only good thing really is that at least the Beltran Labour organisation are no longer around today. They disbanded a few years ago. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you can enjoy this sort of content. As always, thank you guys for the support. It's much appreciated. If you guys have any video topics in mind, please feel free to share below. That would be much appreciated. And also, I hope you enjoyed the bonus video that I released earlier this week. I, I do plan on uploading one or two more bonus videos in the coming weeks when I get time. I think I will try to maybe do a true crime video as a bonus video just to see what you guys think. So look out for that. Anyway, as always, stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one.